Hi everyone, Azrin here. Some of you who follow me on Instagram have seen some of the different types of food that I made over the last year and you guys have requested that I create a dedicated food channel for this. To kick things off, I asked my friends on Instagram what I should be making and quite a few of you requested for me to make one of the most difficult pastries, most technical I think, um, that I've made in a very long time which is the croissant. Croissant? Croissant? Now full disclosure, I actually don't think I'm very good at cooking or baking. I think I'm pretty average at best, but like many others, I started getting into this when the pandemic started. And along the way, I guess I started enjoying it more and more as I started experimenting with new dishes every few weeks, whenever I had the spare time, of course. So I treated these both as a challenge and a hobby. Now let's see how I get on with making croissants from scratch. So for this video, I followed Joshua Weissman's croissant recipe on YouTube and I think it's got like 7 million views on it. And I'm sure half of it is from me just going back and forth to make sure I get it right. And the reason I chose him was because I've had some success in the past when I made his other recipes as he's quite easy to follow and he's pretty entertaining to watch so I'll link the video in the description box below. So the ingredients to making a croissant is fairly simple and you'll need some bread flour, active dry yeast, unsalted butter, and make sure it's European style, which means it has 82% fat, some salt, sugar, water, and an egg yolk. We're then going to activate the yeast in some warm water and leave it to bloom for about 10 minutes. And mix in the dried ingredients, which is your flour, sugar, salt, and give it a whisk. After 10 minutes, you're going to mix in your wet ingredients, including some melted butter, and the egg yolk. Uh, you want to mix this with your spatula or your hands once it's combined. To do that as per Joshua's technique, you're gonna use the slap and fold technique which um, I wasn't sure if I was doing it right but keep going at it until it becomes a smooth dough and then you are gonna wrap it up and let it rest in the fridge for about 10 minutes. So after I let it rest, I did what is called the first turn, which is essentially stretching the edge of the dough into the middle and then gently patting it down um, with the palm of your hands. And you want to do this until it becomes like, you know, an elastic ball. And you're going to let it rest in the fridge for 10 minutes and repeat the entire process all over again. Um, you know, making sure that it's covering the whole thing and let it rest in the fridge for about half an hour. Next, you're gonna take the dough and put it on some parchment paper and make sure it's big enough because I made a mistake here. I think I was a bit too stingy with it. And you'll find out why uh, in about a minute, but essentially you wanna roll out the dough so that it is a rectangular shape and ensure that edge to edge, the parchment paper measures seven inches by seven inches. So I think it's helpful that you roll the dough so that it's maybe an inch under it. And then what you want to do is you want to try to roll out the dough so that it conforms into the shape of um, the square. And I was actually struggling with this for far longer than I want to admit, but you want to make sure that it's as even as possible and there are no like mountainous terrains. And once you've done that, you want to rest it in the fridge overnight. So this is something that you can probably do the night before or the following morning, it doesn't matter. But essentially you are cutting your butter into blocks and measuring it out. And you're going to repeat the process, um, the previous process, which was already a nightmare for me. And I think in a different video, Joshua actually used a cheese grater to do this step, which um, I guess you could try doing it. But I tried to use this method and tried to stick to the video as much as I can. And this time around, the edge to the edge of the parchment paper needs to measure 4 inches by 4 inches. I think I measured the butter to be 3 inches by 3 inches, which helped a lot when I was making the butter conform to the parchment paper. Again, I was struggling with this, but I finally made sure that it's as square and as even as possible. Now this is the mistake that I mentioned earlier, but essentially when I wrapped the dough in the very small parchment paper, one side of it dried out which made it harder for me to roll out the dough and encase the butter. You can see here that it's it wasn't stretching enough uh, as much as uh, the dough in Joshua's video. And as you can see it's so dry, you can see the cracks and it just wasn't conforming properly, wasn't sealing it right. 
and I was already contemplating booking a flight to Paris to get my croissant fix, which is probably easier than making this. So yeah, good job Azre. This episode is starting off really well. However, I felt that I invested so much time into this already, so off camera, I decided to repeat the entire process all over again. And as you can see, this is much, much better. Now at this stage, you want to flour your rolling pin and the dough and sort of gently tap on it so that the butter is better distributed in the rectangle. And now with even pressure, you want to roll out the dough so that the length is roughly about 18 inches. And I think I made a mistake here where I should have let the dough rest for a few more minutes just to let the butter soften up a bit because as you can see when I was rolling it out, there are patches of the butter which sort of meant that it was not distributed as evenly as it should. <laughs> so yeah, I was already beyond the point of no return. And there are many variables where things could go wrong at this stage, so you just gotta watch out. Now you're gonna fold three quarters of the length of the dough away from you and the other quarter towards you and try to keep it as even as you can and then fold it one more time so it becomes like an envelope and just gently pat it down and you want to let it rest in the fridge for about one hour. If you're not already bored and you're still watching this video, we're going to proceed with the next stage and this is called the second fold and you're pretty much going to be repeating the previous process where you are with even pressure lengthening the dough to about 18 inches long. And I should also mention the reason why you want to leave it in the fridge for about an hour. It's so that the gluten can relax a bit and the butter will firm up. Now we're going to fold one third of the length of the dough towards you and then the remaining on top of it so it becomes an envelope. And you're going to let this rest in the fridge up to 12 hours, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference. I think I only rested it for about 5 or 6 hours. So if you're resting it overnight, it's meant to help with the flavour. So again with the previous folds, I would rather let this rest for a few minutes just to let the butter soften up a bit more. And you're going to want to roll this out into 10 inches by 10 inches and if you see any sort of bubbles there as you can see you just try to pop it and joshua doesn't do this in his video because he did a very good job into rolling it into an even square but i made a call to trim the edges of my dough with my pizza cutter scooter thing um, just so that it's a bit more even and i think you can skip this stage so it's probably best to measure this out as even as you can to prevent any wastage and I think I measured around 3 inches here. And you're going to repeat the same at the top bit, but this time around you want to mark in between the two intervals that you marked at the bottom earlier. And then using a long sharp knife, you want to connect the points that you marked earlier and try to cut it in one swift move. And this should give you about 5-6 to six croissants, which I think is more than enough for me personally, even after all that hard work. And once you've got your triangles, you want to try to elongate that to maybe about an inch um, longer and then from the top bit, tightly roll it up so that it becomes into a shape of a croissant. And you want to give it a little box so that the bottom bit sticks. And of course you want to repeat this with the remaining croissants and also note that as you're lengthening it, you want to make sure that you do it gently as you can so as not to tear the croissants apart after all that hard work, you know. And we're going to quickly admire the lamination of these croissants after two days of hard work. And before we let these proof, we are going to brush each croissant with egg wash and let it proof at the bottom of your oven rack with the light on for about two hours and they should double up in size. So make sure to space these guys out as far as you can. After it's doubled up in size, you want to brush them with egg wash again and then put them in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius for about 6 minutes and then lower the temperature down to about 166 degrees Celsius for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it's golden brown. And there you go, these are probably unlike any other croissants you've seen in your life but you can't fault me okay, it was my first attempt. So my place smells like a French bakery, which is nice. But this is Joshua Weisman's croissant recipe that I made. Um, took me about two, two and a half-ish days. But in terms of actual active work, I think he's right. It's only about like 
an hour, which is not too bad actually. Looks wise, it's you know, it yeah, it's quite. I'm quite. I'm quite pleased with it. Lots of layers. Very flaky. You know, I don't know if you can hear this. I think I'm gonna dig into this. It's good. It's soft. It's very buttery. It's crispy on the outside. Mm. So we made croissants from scratch and I hope you enjoyed watching the video as much as I enjoyed creating those croissants. I'm joking, it was actually quite a pain to be making those. And if you ask me if it's worth making it, I'm not entirely sure. If you have a lot of spare time in your hands and you want to have that sense of achievement in creating something, then by all means, go for it. Otherwise, I just recommend going to a bakery and just getting your fix uh, there instead. But if you still want to go through all that work and make croissants, then I highly recommend watching Joshua's videos because his instructions are very clear and I rate him highly. And finally, if you want to see me create other popular recipes you've seen online, leave a comment below and I'll see you next time.